The collapse of the U.S. steel industry forced Drew Mihalik uh, in 1977 to leave Pittsburgh, a one-time capital of industry that U.S. President Barack Obama will show to world leaders this week as a bold example of a new green economy. Um, Halleck 58 recalls bubbling calderones of metal during summer jobs as U.S. Steel as a college student. Now he works in a dust-free workplace as environmental health and safety manager at Solar Power Industries, a maker of solar cells. Again, no one's against solar energy, but they're using solar energy and, you know, other forms of alternatives such as wind and water energy. And saying, this is the solution. They're never going to give us the solution. If they wanted to give us the solution, we would have had the electric car in mass by now. Not some crappy hybrid. A real electric car. Let me explain it to you. In the 80s, they had an electric car that got 88 miles to the charge. Watch Who Killed the Electric Car, narrated by Martin Sheen, of course, the father of outspoken celebrity activist Charlie Sheen. By the way, Charlie's going to be on... Uh, the Emmys tonight, and uh, let's hope he wins because he says he's got an open stage, and uh, I truly believe that he will take it to the next level as he's done in the past couple of weeks. I mean, that open letter to the president opened so many more eyes up to 9-11 Truth, got so many more people to Google these facts. That six-minute video that Aaron Dykes put out was simply amazing. It really consolidated a lot of the good information about 9-11 Truth in a short period of time. And, of course, with the star power of the number one paid actor in the world, it can I'm not sure even what it's up to. But last uh, last time I checked, it was half a million last week. So I don't know if it's up over a million, if it's close to a million. That's just one copy of it. It's been copied hundreds of times and posted. So that's positive. But again, they always take positivity and they turn it into negativity. We want I, I want solar energy. I don't want a. Uh, an, uh, an electric bill every day or uh, every month. I, I would love to be able to get off the grid, no electric bill, the sun provides for me, one-time fee. But do you think that the controllers, that the elite out there want that for humanity? That you pay one time for something and then you're fine for the rest of your life? Of course they don't want that. I mean, look at the car industry, the Tucker. They didn't want a car that lasted 30, 40, 50 years. You know what? Because you don't buy another car for 30, 40, 50 years. And they want to constantly sell you stuff. This is about consumerism. It's mind control. And so he's going to go up there and he's going to preach about this guy who once worked in the evil steel industry and people who once worked in the evil coal industry now can work greener jobs based on solar energy. But what this is, is a real redistribution of wealth where you have to pay exorbitant amounts for regular power because it's not green enough. All the while, the dollar collapses, your value goes down and down and down and down, and then they say, you know what, it, it doesn't make any sense for the United States to be the United States of America anymore. It's time for the North American Union. We really have to work with our neighbors in Mexico and Canada to get through this tough economic time. And remember, they're telling you it's over. The recession's over. Meanwhile, the dollar is at its lowest point since 2008. Give me a break. And if you doubt that this carbon tax is just for you and that this carbon credit system is going, people say to me, oh, this carbon si credit system is going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. Big business hates it. They're going to have to clean up their act, big business. EU, plastics, textiles industries win CO2 cost exemption. Cost exemption, okay? Let, uh, let, let's, let's realize it. The big guys aren't paying for jack diddly squat. It's me and you. Europe's plastics, textiles, plywood, and cast iron makers won a battle on Friday to be spared the cost of buying permits for their climate warming emissions. European Commission documents showed. And they should have won that challenge. But the problem is that me and you, Joe Average, we're not going to win the challenge. Yeah, big business is going to win time and time again. It's going to kind of be brushed under the rug. Me and you? No, we're going to be paying our carbon tax all across the globe. So again, this is not about reining in big business and their polluting ways. This is about controlling the moms and pops and those shops of the world. All right, let's take some calls. Let's go to Mark in Georgia. Mark, you're on the line. Yes, sir. Man, how are you? How are you, sir? Um, try to explain 
explain to people, do you really think a devil worshiper is going to run on a pro-human sacrifice, pro-tyranny platform? And they go, what? Like, excuse me, the devil's been in the business of deceiving mankind for, what, 6,000 years? Oh, the shame is not admitting that you've been had. The shame is and not even admitting the possibility you've been had, like all the rest of us have. Uh, by the way, um, I've got a do news account. It's Monk Anabaptist, uh, like the radical reformers who were uh, basically slaughtered by the so-called reformers. Yeah, right. Um does what I'm saying make sense to you so far, or am I making Well, no, I agree. I mean, obviously, the elite out there, I mean, you just look at what they do. They act like they're Christian conservatives, people like Bush and uh, others, and even Newt Gingrich. They get up there, and Newt Gingrich is a real talking head these days, and they say, oh, we're conservative. But then they go, go off and do pagan rituals every summer in the Bohemian Grove Club. And obviously, they're more than hypocritical. Obviously, they're masking an agenda. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis. We'll be back with your calls after this. 888-201-2244, InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Folks, we are back. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis. We're taking your calls. Eric in Pennsylvania. Eric, you're on the line. Hey, yes, Jason. How you doing? Uh, somebody left me a comment on my MySpace last night. It's about mm -hmm. this film that's supposed to come out on Tuesday. You might have heard of it. It's called Loose Change 9 11 and American Coup. Yes. Narrated by Charlie Sheen? No. No? Uh, you no. did the trailer? Well, no, I didn't do the trailer, but I've seen the movie. Uh, no, it's not narrated by Charlie Sheen. It's uh, narrated by uh, Daniel Sinjata, actually. Oh, wow, he sounds a lot like him. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, you're talking about the electric car that had one in 1980. Actually, mm -hmm. one of the first cars they ever had was called the Bakersfield. In 1908, it was an electric car. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm talking about just ready for the public, but they wouldn't allow the public to buy... Um, the electric car that I'm talking about, they only allowed them to lease it. And then at the end of their option, none of them were actually able to buy their automobiles. And what they did is they rounded those automobiles up and put them into a crusher. God forbid, you know, engineers who are working in the 90s or even in modern times today, because it is 2009, we're almost to 2010, yet another decade has almost gone by. If they were able to look at an automobile made 20 years ago with an electric engine, I would guess they could either double or triple its capacity in miles. Uh, you know, I don't think it would be out of the realm that we could get 160 or 240 miles to a charge. Do you, Eric? Not at all, especially with solar panels on your uh, your car is sitting in a parking lot in the sun all day. I mean, what where what is? I don't understand why we don't have solar panels on our cars. Well, on. that's there are some um, electric solar hybrids out there, but they don't want this out there for mass distribution. Imagine a solar powered automobile. I mean, that would be even more off the charts. How are they going to regulate the sun? Oh yeah, they're going to block it. And you know, that's one of the stories I've got here, Eric. I got to get to that one. I thank you for the call. Um, now they're openly talking about these NASA experiments where they are shooting aerosols into the air or uh, what is it, particulates is another uh, word that they use here. Uh, but when they did this new one, which I guess were rockets and not planes, remember the planes don't exist, chemtrails don't exist, or prolonged uh, con contrails, no, I'm sorry, persistent contrails is the term that Rosalind, Rosalind Peterson likes to use. But they don't exist on the record. But there is all this documentation about a NASA program pertaining to them. And now this is a NASA program. Scientists launched a rocket experiment aimed at creating artificial high-altitude clouds on Saturday evening, sparking reports of strange lights in the sky. And again, the Obama administration just came out four, five months ago and said, yeah, we're thinking about shooting uh, particulates into the upper atmosphere uh, to block the sun. And uh, even Stern commented on it, believe it or not. And uh, then it just kind of fell off. Oh, we're not going to talk about it anymore. And then this project came up. Uh, the project called Charred Aerosol Release Experiment, CARE, 
You got to love the acronym. Oh, we care so much about you. Remember, this is all about how much they love you and they want to take care of you because that's the role of government. They took care of you so well when they allowed Factor 8 to go out into hemophiliacs to get into the populace so we could have a mass, mass, mass pandemic called HIV and AIDS. Okay, the hype on that is just, you look at that hype. I remember having the fear of God put into me in the 80s about how we were all going to get AIDS and die. Don't sleep with a girl unprotected. We don't really know how, you know, you have to be very careful out there. Meanwhile, they give factor eight to all these hemophiliacs. Because remember, they said initially it spread through hemophiliacs as they needed, you know, they were blood donors. No, you injected hemophiliacs with HIV and AIDS with factor eight. And then when you got caught doing it in the United States, where did you take that factor eight? You didn't take it off the market. Nobody got prosecuted. No one got in trouble. No, you moved it over to Europe and did the same thing.